we got all these new uh, containers from the buck store. I got these plain old, plain old round ones to put all the cuttings in. I've got these little octagon ones. Look at the drainage on these. They're so tiny. And then I've got larger ones of those. I just took a pack out. And they're decently thick, but the drainage is pretty nice on these. They don't seem to bend or crush or anything, like the nursery pots. And they're just from Dollarama. Buck uh, fifty for those. What are these round ones? Buck twenty-five for round ones. What are these little ones? Buck twenty-five for three or four of the little ones. Three of these. These come in threes. And then I picked up some of these. Um, dishwashing pans. I might switch over some of my plants that dry really quickly in the baskets into those pans. Maybe they won't dry out so fast in the house. I'll put holes in them of course like I do with all my other stuff I use. But yeah, I <laughs> thought you guys would like to see this. It's Dollarama. I guess in the States maybe Dollar Tree would carry them. They're, they're pretty nice little starter pots, but I'm going to put all my cuttings in them. I've got uh, some stuff rooting here, but I've got all these cuttings. I'm going to keep a few, and then um, there'll be lots of giveaways. So I wanted some cheap pots to just be able to give stuff away with. And nursery pots are actually more expensive than than these now which is weird but I do have some lying around that I'll use up and then I've got all those sea onions over there that all need to be individually potted so they can be given away or sold or whatever. And I still got my my big one I just brought outside today. It definitely needs a trim up. Oop. My big one. I need to get all the babies out of here. There's a whole bunch of babies. These guys here get pregnant and uh, and they'll birth babies. Here's one here. Oh, it's already rooting even. But there's little babies here and it's pregnant belly. It's going to have another one here. and Yep, and there's little babies all over the place. Oops. There's a baby. There's that baby. Yep, sea onion. Pretty neat plant and it's medicinal. You um, cut a piece of this leaf off. And it's got like a coating on each side. So on one side, you peel off this coating on the leaf. And then you mush up the leaf a little bit to get it kind of gooey. All the stuff that's between the coating. And then if you've got a cut that's infected or something you don't want to scar, you lay that chunk of leaf down on top of you. Just on top of wherever your cut or infection is, you put a band-aid over it and you go to bed. And in the morning it'll be all dried up and just stuck to you like a piece of tape. And then you peel it off and usually it brings out the infection or helps to heal up the scar so it's not so noticeable. And these guys, not only do they get pregnant and have millions of babies, They'll also produce seed. They have these giant flower stalks. And the flower stalks will come up and they'll start to flower from the bottom up. And they'll flower for a very long time. A really pretty little flower like a spider plant gets. Yeah. Not bonsai, but still something I like. Here's all the babies. Somebody asked me to uh, grow a few because they had friends that wanted some and they never did come back to get them so 
I've got lots and lots and lots. Yeah, and the babies are having babies and they like being outside. Definitely. These guys are a weed in the UK, apparently. Found that up when I was looking for the real name for them. I've always known them as um, Medicine Onion. And before the internet was really out there, all I had was books to look through and I couldn't find these guys anywhere. But with the help of the internet, I found them. What's in there? Oh, there's a spider. There's spider hiding. Hi, buddy. Ever cute. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. So I think that's what I'm going to do today is just pot all my cuttings separately. And I got to do something with these pomegranates. Someone was asking how many I have left. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine there. There's a forest of them here. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more there. Uh, there's the fairy ring I was trying to do, but didn't quite work because that dries out so fast in the house. But there's probably 50 trees in there. And then there's some over by the bonsai area, and there's another forest of them over there. And uh, where else do I have pomegranates? Yes, there's still lots of pomegranates. So what I think I want to do with those is the ones that are nice and or they're a little bit thicker. I think what I'll do is I'll pot them individually in actual pots and give them a nice trim so they look nice. Uh, and the other ones I'll pot, I'll add to this forest because I lost a few trees in here. So I'll add them to this forest, the little skinny ones that uh, wouldn't make good specimen trees. And then um, all the other ones, I'll start taking a little better care of them. And uh, see these big long ones here, not to change the subject, but these big long ones here is growing them out as long as I could because I was going to do a project with them. But I don't think I'll do that now, so I'll probably cut them back and... Yeah, anyways, then um, I, I really do want to go down to Southern Ontario and meet everybody, so uh, I'll start preparing those to bring with me and give away down there. Um, they don't really work in this zone, and I've had, out of the probably 50 people I've given them away to, maybe five of them have them still surviving as houseplants. And these guys here were just host plants. This is their first year outside. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible. Never start an entire fruit worth of seed. Even if your child makes really cute puppy dog eyes at you, just don't do it. Do maybe five. That's it. <laughs> Today you'll be hearing lots of lawn work in the background. Seems to be one of those nice days for lawn work. And chainsawing by the sounds of it. So yesterday at work we were digging up another section of the gravel pit. And there were tons and tons of these um, <coughs> um, jack pines should look up the actual name of them but I grabbed two just for the sake of grabbing some and since they were being pulled out of the ground and um, obviously we're not going to survive anyways I figured it won't hurt so I'm going to pot these up and they're really um, flexible if I can get them over but they're super super flexible so I was thinking of um, doing something like uh, Patricia in the, bel the bonsai balcony does with all her Cheerios I'll do some loop-de-loops with these ones 
and just see what happens. But for now, they need to be potted up and uh, see if they survive first. Yeah. My first ficus, it's a ficus benjamina. Every year I bring it outside. It usually loses all its winter leaves, although a couple have stayed on. And it, uh, it buds out like this, like crazy. And then it sits here dormant, just like this, all summer long. It doesn't grow at all out here. Oh, huh, getting some crooked leaves, I'm not sure why. Throw some fertilizer in there, maybe? Anyway. I was wondering why it does that. Oops. Come on, clear up. There we go. It's almost completely healed. Pretty cool, eh? But yeah, it does this every year. I've brought it outside a few years so since I've had it. Um, it doesn't grow at all out here. And then when I bring it back into the house, uh, about a, not even a week later, it'll have a huge flush of growth like crazy. But it never grows outside. Never. I've always wondered why. My other ones are the same thing. Uh, the ones that are in my tarp shelter here, they don't get as much uh, sunlight, so they didn't lose their indoor leaves. So they still have their winter leaves, but there's no new growth. There's these little tiny buds that grow. If I trim it, they'll butt out a whole bunch of these little tiny buds but then they'll just stop. They just won't grow at all. This one I cut in the last video and you'll see it'll flush out with a whole bunch of little tiny buds like this, but then and it'll just wait. It'll just stay there. Sorry, mosquito. I was wondering if anybody else had that issue because I see Nigel's um, ficus all grow like crazy outside big canopies and everything but mine mine seem to go dormant outside in the heat and I'm not sure what the difference is my little cuttings my little cuttings are doing good this is off my calendar girl it's so happy it's tall pencil thin perfectly straight but it's so happy Hopefully these ones will have um, aerial roots like Nigel's get. Teeny tiny things. I just wanted to see if I could do it. And that's off of this one. But it's off of the top growth where it's grafted. And I'm not sure if it's the same tree or a different type of tree or why they would need to graft. But they did. So we got to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. So if anybody knows, drop a comment, please. I would appreciate it. One of the neighborhood troublemakers. Always getting into everything. Good thing they're cute. <laughs> I finally opened my big bag of soil. So I'm going to mix that with um, perlite and my uh, brick chips and uh, mix in their old soil with it and then I'll repot them both in that. Once I get it all mixed and I get the camera stand set up then um, we can repot those. So I got it all mixed up and uh, opened up my new bag of stuff which is pretty much peat and perlite mix. I put my extra perlite in there, my brick chips in there, and the soil that they came from was gravel of course because it's from a gravel pit and sand because it's right by the sand pile, the screen sand that I make with the screener. I think you guys have seen a couple videos of that maybe. Well, I don't know if I put it on here but 
I won't bore you with that today. So I've got the Christmas tree pots that I'm going to use. Uh, I want them a little bit over potted, um, mostly because I worried about winter. So I'd rather have everything um, over potted. I don't know if I'll put them in a shed this year or if I'm going to try burying them, burying them, whatever you call it, like the um, greenhouses do. They actually lay all their trees potted on their sides and um, they bury the pot and then put uh, straw over the entire thing, tree and all. And that's how they overwinter their trees. I'm thinking maybe to try something similar this year. Although fear has me overthinking everything. But uh, we got to get it sorted out. i got to figure it out. So these guys, because they're loose, they... I just pulled them out. I left the soil on there. I'm not going to clean them down any more than that. And I'm not going to do any root work because this is absolutely, definitely not the time of year to be repotting these. So that's the root system on that one. And this is what we have on this one. And of course, it's because uh, they were kind of half dug out by a machine and kind of left laying there. So it is what it is. We got what we got. So we're going to work with it. Yeah, it's one long root. But we're going to leave it anyway. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move some of this soil over here, put this pot right in the middle, and actually I should probably move you guys up. Let me see here. Undo this, twist that, turn that, move this. There we go. Now you guys can see in there. And I'm just going to sort of half place this in here. In a rumply sort of way. And I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. Hubby was... On a mission coming straight over here, I knew he needed to ask something, so I had to answer, of course. Let me see if I can zoom you guys in a little bit. So, yeah. So, this one is just going to be just placed in there nice. Try and save as much root as humanly possible. I buried my foot in dirt there, but that's okay. So if there was any micro rhiza or anything like that, it'll be in the original soil. So the original soil that uh, they came with is mixed into all this new soil. With extra drainage and all that kind of stuff all, all happening in there. Added, I mean. Words are hard. Where's my bro broken root rake? There it is. I still haven't repaired it, so I'll use it as a pokey tool because I can't seem to find my chopstick. It is missing. So I'm pulling it up at the same time as I'm pushing down on the soil, just pushing it up a little bit. That's to get it a little higher in the pot and to have the roots kind of, um, instead of being completely flat, 
kind of on a bit of an angle. Get all the air pockets out of there. And this one probably won't firm up too much in the pot because, well, we saw the root system, it's pretty one-sided. So I don't expect it to really firm up too much. So I probably won't do any work to this one right away. I'll probably let it root. Well, I probably will on both. Or who knows? I might just go ahead and attack everything and see what happens and there we have it the ground level actually was in this because they were pretty much already like dug up by the time I got to them. We'll say it's there. We'll go with that. It's uh it's a fairly tall one so We'll see what we can do with that. I'll just put this one aside so we can pop the other one right away. Same thing. Get the soil out of the way here. The pot in the middle. This stuff dries out really quickly. The weather. Like I just put that stuff in there. It's already dried out. And this one here with its little root system. Actually you've got a decent root system on this one. Look at that. For what it is and where it was growing. I don't want to do too too much to the root system. I'm just trying to figure out what this weird looking thing here is but looks like it's a fused root bring you guys in again yeah so this one since it's got a root system that goes on both sides properly we'll do the mound in the middle thing Have it mound in the middle. And then we'll place the roots over it best we can. Trying to keep everything untangled. somewhat radial fashion best we can and the same thing with this one as you're pushing down on the soil and uh, getting the roots in there, you just lift just that tiny little bit. And that'll have the roots a bit more natural. You'll never guess who I learned that from.
And this one's got a neat little bend right at the soil there. And again, I don't know what the actual soil height was for these ones. So we got a guess. We'll probably be moving it down later anyway. Be like Tom. Fire those fingers in there. Don't be afraid. and pretty stable in there and then this one too decently tall smaller than the other one but still decently tall and this one's gonna be pretty bendy so I don't know I might uh, I might bend these guys up might watch a couple more of Patricia's videos on the belt the bonsai balcony there get some inspiration she has a different type of tree that she does all her crazy bends with but it's fascinating and since these guys were pulled out of the ground anyway I could probably give it a try with these or I'll let them settle first I don't know yet you'll know but you'll know not long after I do this video will either go on to something else or it'll go on to more work on these <laughs> I gotta go water them, so I'll water them with the hose, water them in real good, and add some more soil, and then that's that. <laughs>